Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome back to the Inquisitive Brain Podcast. I'm Shaw, your host, and I hope that you're all keeping well. During my workshops, I often ask people to bring along an object that they may use to help them to focus and to meditate. The most popular item that people bring is a crystal. Some people bring along a photograph, a piece of jewelry, or a talisman, as it were. In terms of focusing your attention, sometimes it's helpful to have a focal point, something to concentrate on. However, my goal in teaching is to help you to need nothing. Nothing but your mind. That is all you need. The Beatles said, all you need is love, yes, and all you need is your mind to focus or to gain focus so that you can shift, move, extrapolate, pull in, move out your energy. Once you can do that, you can then focus on all that is challenging to help you to gain peace. This is the essence of this talk today, and This podcast is based upon personal experiences, and we have to start at the beginning. To gain perspective, let us start with the issue of spirituality, meaning the spirit or the soul. The spirit, the soul, is not material. It's not materialistic. It's not a physical thing in the human world. It is that energy within, that which is immortal, that which never dies, that which lives on forever. By this we mean that when your material, physical, human body expires, and it will, your soul continues with all of your human experiences, your earth learning, and all of your human existence memory and experience. This is how a medium can identify the souls that come forward through mediumship. We're able to see, but also sense and feel that soul's energy that was once a physical existence identified as a human or an animal on the earth plane. There is the issue of other beings as well, or creatures, and I believe they too exist. And on the rare occasion, I have seen them and communicated, but they are whisked away quite quickly. Uh, My experience has been brief with them. I don't believe it's been because they mean harm. I believe they appeared when it was not their place and therefore were not allowed to stay. And that was in my early experiences in channeling. And my energy was open to receive lots of different things and sometimes those things did pop in not scary but interesting this brings me to other talismans such as statues or deities goddesses and gods crosses books flowers etc symbols as well all of these items may connect with your soul your energy in some way but they do not make you spiritual. What makes you spiritual is your thought and belief systems connected to them. Your mind has made a connection based on your belief. For instance, crystals have a chemical formula, like all things, and crystals have a mineral forming substance. This is why they can affect change. They can shift your energy and have healing properties. This includes the effect of crystal shape as well, be it trigonal, you know, these are the calcites, the dolomites, or the tetragonal, these are the apophyllites, the zircon crystals, or the monoclinic, these would be the malachite, the moonstones, also cubic, and most Icelandic spars, one of my favorite crystals, Diamonds, garnets, fluorites are cubic. A crystal is a solid body with a geometrically regular shape. And the first scientific theory on crystal structure, as I was talking about cubic, was published by a French mineralogist called René 
Aoi in 1784. And Rene discovered that crystals have a geometric shape in atoms and molecules. So even when they're broken up, and I've talked about when I've dropped crystals before and they've shattered into pieces, they still maintain that molecular geometric shape, even in their smaller forms. Though they are physical items, they have a soul, an energy, a chemical structure, as do we. This is why we can connect with them. It is absolutely fine to surround yourself with beautiful items. I believe we all like to be surrounded by beautiful things. And there's nothing more naturally beautiful besides flowers, perhaps, than crystals. The array of colors, shapes, spectrums of light that they can produce are stunning to the human eye. And this may inspire you to be more tuned in with yourself and with the universe and with your immediate surroundings. This may also inspire you spiritually, but it will be your thoughts that determine the effect you allow the crystals to have on your energy that in turn affects the impact that they have on your soul, your spirit. Trinkets don't make you spiritual. Eastern philosophies have taught us, you know, ways in which we can enhance our human experiences. And some of those, including yoga, meditation, mindfulness, all mind-body experiences, as well as singing bowls, tuning forks, drums, sticks, incense, bells, wands, clothing, rites and rituals, and of course, as mentioned before, crystals. They are taught to help us, or we are taught to use them to help us. But you don't have to travel to India to learn how to meditate. You don't need a singing bowl to focus your mind. You don't need incense to get you in the mood to focus your thoughts. However, all of these things can help to enhance your experience. They may also become a very helpful part of a ritual that you create to prepare yourself for a meditation. For instance, as I prepare for a mediumship reading, depending upon where I am, I may light a candle in preparation for my connection with spirit. I don't have to, but I may do. Not always, but it can be a part of my process. When I'm at home, I can do a number of things, like light incense, a candle, have a crystal nearby, uh, become secluded. But when giving a public demonstration, though most the spiritualist churches give us private rooms in which to meditate and prepare. I don't have to do that, but I can and I do. But I won't have a candle. I could have, but I don't. Or incense. I just sit and connect with spirit using my special process, which is specific for me. No trinkets, nothing. Just my mind. Now, I may be wearing a crystal because I love them so much, but I may not be wearing one. Crystals are jewelry as well, so some may not go with the outfit, plain and simple. In other words, I don't need them. I may choose to have them, but they are not necessary. A word of advice is when you see someone wearing a particular crystal, such as maybe rose quartz, which is known to have a uh, properties to help you to open yourself up to love, to help you to exude love. It doesn't necessarily mean that the person wearing that crystal is seeking love or wanting to bring in love. It may be that they like the colors of the crystals or that they may go with the outfit or that it is a talisman to help to heal someone else. You cannot try to work out someone by the crystal that they're wearing. I once asked someone about the crystal they were wearing, and it turned out that they had no idea of the properties of the stone, and that it was a family heirloom, and they loved the way it looked. It was how they thought about the stone that determined its meaning to them. 
Though I do believe that the stone's chemical structure would either resonate with their chemical structure or not. This is why we're drawn to wear some stones one day and perhaps not on other days. If they had no resonance with the heirloom, they may have sold it or passed it on, no matter how beautiful it looked. I once bought a bracelet, a crystal bracelet from someone, but once I got it home, after cleansing it for days, I just didn't want it, plain and simple. And I gave it to someone else and they love it and they're always wearing it. Great! It simply was not meant for me. It was meant for me to buy it and give it away. But it wasn't meant for me, for whatever reason. I had hummed and hawed a while before buying it as well, so that should have been a clue. But it was in my early days of learning to trust my energy. Singing bowls. So singing bowls can be used and our energy being vibrating, you know, our energy vibrates at a frequency and any object that can manipulate that frequency can be helpful. So singing bowls vibrate at a frequency that changes and can help you to relax, can help you to go into a meditative state. They can be made of metal or crystal some of those huge selenite crystal singing bowls are absolutely stunning and these bowls are often used in sound therapy as well which can produce an altered state of consciousness the sound can help with pain relief headaches migraines injuries and to help improve blood circulation another trinket that can be used is the tuning fork and tuning forks are a two-pronged object that when struck produces a sound or a note and musicians often use this to tune their instruments. Some people use these in the way that singing bowls are used, although many people use this, use this just like a bell. They would use a bell at the start of a meditation or a mantra um, or they may tap something like a stick or something and they may open their meditation with it and close it with it, like a chime, perhaps. But I want to talk for a moment about brain waves and how these sounds can help to affect change within our chemical structure. And brain waves are essential to our ability to relax and to change our chemical structure. For example, for example, delta waves are the human being's deepest levels of relaxation, and restoration and healing sleep. If you listen to my recording, Give Me Restful Sleep, I use delta waves. Because I'm not a trained musician, I didn't know how to keep my voice in a delta wave space. But what I have learned through practice and through my own practitioner practice as a hypnotherapist is to try and tune my voice to the music. And because the delta waves were there, I could keep my voice on track while inflecting particular words that I needed to to help to affect change in a hypnotherapeutic state. Gamma waves stimulate your energy field. And I use gamma waves in my recordings for concentration, um, for focus, for motivation, to help others. And my recordings for these topics are enthused with gamma waves. And alpha waves, which is probably one of the most acknowledged and recognized brain waves, are used to uh, help people with visualization, creativity, when you're seeking to create a path or to find new ways in which you can live and work. I use alpha waves in teaching meditation, in teaching mindfulness. And then there are theta waves, which are used in hypnotherapy. So you all know that I am a hypnotherapist. And this is the deepest of the unconscious mind, the REM dream state. My hypnotherapy training was fantastic. And we did go through all of the states. And it's really helpful to to have experienced them yourself and this too has helped me to achieve levels of consciousness and altered states of consciousness that perhaps i would not have 
done otherwise. And as I've practiced it so much, I have expert experience to help others. But also, I, no matter what training you have, you have to do your own research. And this helped in my practice. But it also helped me as I was learning how to manipulate my own energy field. And it helped to support my therapeutic practice. Never miss a show by clicking the subscribe button right now. Thank you for your support. You make this podcast possible. Now, back to the show. Your mental health is a priority. Nine Pitches Therapies offers gentle and soothing therapy for your mind, body and soul. These self-help recordings focus on improving the quality of your life by providing you what you need right now, be it confidence, positivity, restful sleep, or relaxation. The soothing, calming music has been specially composed to accompany the body of words created by me, an expert in this field, to help you to achieve the best result. Reprogram your mind using the most gentle and effective guided meditations that can help you to clear and cleanse any unwanted energy that may be negatively affecting your life. Improve the quality of your life in just a few minutes a day. Nine Peaches Therapies, Holistic Therapeutic Consultancy. If you're enjoying the show so far, here's your chance to subscribe and support the channel. Hit that like button and also, very importantly, leave me a comment wherever you are listening or watching. Even if you just put an emoji, it lets us know that you're with us. Here's your countdown. Thanks for your support. Now back to the show. Chanting has also been known to assist in altered states of consciousness and certainly musical pieces as well. One of my favorite meditative pieces is from Ravi Shankar and when he played the Monterey International Pop Festival in 1967. But I use music in my therapeutic recordings because they help. And as I've said before, with the different brain waves, they, it helps to affect change. I want to now address the issue of psychedelics and spirituality, such as ayahuasca, peyote, and they're used by shamans in a ritual state, ritual healing, expansion of consciousness. Some people have reported therapeutic effects in terms of relieving depression, especially, and other personal issues. And there are many scientific studies that report these changes. You know, the, the findings are mixed. However, there are reported deaths from the use as well. But those, a lot of those scientific papers point to perhaps unforeseen pre-existing medical conditions that may have contributed to those deaths. Psychedelics are entheogens and they are psychoactive substances. They induce alterations in consciousness, behavior, cognition, mood, perception, and psilocybin or magic mushrooms is now being widely used in trials to treat depression. Now, some people link all of this to spirituality. So let's see how that could be. Again, lots of research that you can look up regarding this issue. But of course, there was the whole psychedelic movement with American psychologist and author um, Timothy Leary, who was a pioneer advocate of psychedelic drugs, as well as Richard Albert. And Richard Alpert, you may know as Ram Das. He changed his name. So Leary foresaw the use of psychedelics in psychology because, of course, we now have several well-known institutions who 
have programs that use psilocybin to help people with chronic depression. I don't believe that you need any drug to expand your consciousness. That is my belief system. If you learn to practice meditation, mind expansion happens. You're able to visualize, to see, feel, color, to experience and change your chemistry, your molecular structure, including your brain waves through all states during that time. It takes much dedication. It takes much practice. It takes you taming the monkey mind. And that will take dedication and practice. And an addendum to this is that this may or may not happen for everyone. I believe it depends on your own experiences and also how much you're open to receive these experiences, how much you believe you can create them all on your own without any help. I can only say that through my own practices, I believe that what I have experienced based upon the information that is accessible in reports, papers, and reading about others' personal experiences, the altered state of consciousness, that I am able to achieve through meditation and focused effort, I believe that would be parallel to that which is achieved through any psychedelic, including the images you may experience. Because, of course, that's what everybody focused on, was the images that they got. The images that they say gave them insight into the world, into themselves, and about other people. Well, you can get that through deep, deep meditation. Now, I know that may be controversial, but what I'm saying is that I do believe in, through my own research, uh, the use of psilocybin. I do believe that that may be able to help people. Well, there's a lot of supporting evidence uh, with chronic depression. I'm not convinced it's for everyone, but also, I do believe that you can achieve on your own those altered states of consciousness. And I can only say through my own experiences of meditation, and this is through years and years and years of practice, that that is achievable without any help. I say help, but I want to say without anything else, because help sounds as though you need help to do it. And I don't believe you need help to do it. I believe you can do it on your own. Which brings me to the issue of celebrity. So I want to say this. Please do not be fooled by celebrity experiences. Celebrities have always publicized their, uh, what they would call their spiritual experiences through taking psychedelics. And this is not to diminish their experiences, but to caution you that some of their choices to recall their accounts in modern day, I'm, I'm going to talk about the 60s and 70s in a moment, but in modern day will be based upon wanting to appear better than or higher than a normal regular human being than Joe Blow. For instance, they may recall having, you know, several trips away, have ayahuasca, experiences in South America. Now, why they need several trips, I'm not sure. But in, in other words, some accounts may be an attempt to appear to be more spiritual than others, appear to have worked harder at it, or to have more money so that they can experience those things. In contrast, when the Beatles met the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi, it was to learn about spirituality, specifically TM, Transcendental Meditation, as a replacement for drugs. In the 60s, with counterculture and the hippie movement, LSD was readily available and it was legal. Uh, and it wasn't made illegal in the UK, I think in the US as well, until 1966. 
So taking a tab of acid went hand in hand with smoking pot or listening to music. It was the counterculture. It was meant to help you to have a spiritual experience. The trip itself, as it was called, was to assist you to turn on, tune in and drop out, according to Leary, to your world and humanity and your part or the part you play within it. Much like what meditation does. I mean, this relationship with the Maharishi was fraught with disdain later on when the guru, Maharishi, was accused of inappropriate behavior towards some women and the Beatles eventually distanced themselves from him. I talk about the West's fascination of gurus in some of my previous podcasts, so have a little look. The moral of the story is, human beings are just that. They are human and they have to find their own way. So I would encourage you to not copy or try to covet what someone else is doing or has done. Be inspired, but do not aspire to. In today's world, people must seek to have those experiences and therefore celebrities have influence. And if you see a a huge seven foot crystal in a celebrity's home and they're hugely successful, you may believe that you need that huge crystal to gain that type of success. Not only is this untrue, but it's dangerous. Whilst a tuning fork can help a musician, it may be useless to you on your spiritual journey. Trinkets don't make you spiritual. Yes, it's nice to have nice things, nice crystals, but the smaller tumble stones are just as powerful in their energy as is a seven foot geode. Trinkets serve a purpose, as do all things we acquire, although they are on loan to us because we don't take them with us when we die. They have a use in our lives. This is why clutter is pointless. Having said that, some people are buried with items, so they do take them with them. But they're not likely to take a 5,000 piece crystal collection buried with them or tossed in the sea with their ashes. Everything has an energy, be it a crystal, incense, or other trinket. Overall, It may help you to have different things in your home or different things that surround you, that assist you. It certainly helps me. I love crystals and I use them for healing purposes. My preference is for raw stones because of their appearance. They look so good. But more importantly, they feel amazing. Holding them, meditating with crystals, they feel great. But I do love tumble stones as well. They are great for tinctures. They're great for placing on the body for healing and meditation. So I'd like you to try this. Find a comfortable space to lie down. And after a few deep breaths, place your favorite crystal on your forehead right between your eyebrows and just a bit above. Some call this your third eye. Focus on how it feels. If it's cold, it may change temperature soon, but it may not. Know the properties of this crystal and focus on absorbing those properties into your energy field. If you fall asleep, that's fine. If the crystal falls off of your head or any other part of your body, that's fine too. It's just done its job. Whilst I do encourage the use of crystals and other tools, I would always encourage you to try meditating first. Without them. Try both, with and without.
If you've ever had a reading with me, you'll know that I encourage you to light incense, light a candle, or both to help you to relax and to prepare for your reading. I felt encouraged to do this podcast today because I wouldn't want anyone to think that they have to have a particular crystal or trinket or go to India to be spiritual or to have a sound bar or to do a sweat lodge or to take a hallucinogenic. You can meditate. None of those things make you spiritual. You don't need any of them to alter your concentration or to alter your state of consciousness. You don't have to have a meditation room to be spiritual or an altar or tarot cards or crystal ball or sage. All of these things and more can only enhance your experiences but they cannot make you a spiritual being. Only your soul can do that. And to connect to your soul, you must make the effort to connect with it. In the end, it's your human body, your mind and your soul. What trinkets can do is to help you to relax your body to quiet in your mind, so to connect to your soul. What makes you spiritual is living spiritually, having kind thoughts, doing kind things, making good decisions, treating people and animals and living things well, and protecting yourself, so treating yourself well, not subjecting yourself to abuse from others, removing yourself from abusive people and situations, taking care of your body, and being mindful of the language you use and how it affects others, so the words you use what you call people, what you say to people. Being mindful of your thoughts and how they give out energy. Being aware of your space, cleanliness, removing clutter and making all things harmonious. Helping your life to become harmonious. We seek enlightenment, and that will involve effort from you to achieve enlightenment. And whilst trinkets are rays of light, the in-light, in other words, the light within, comes from within. I hope that this has helped you in some way. Thank you so much for listening. And I look forward to seeing you soon.